Shalom brothers and sisters in the world. Greetings to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In this testimony, you're about to hear the hidden mysteries of eternity that our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth has revealed to us in this last generation, through his mercy and grace. At the time of this testimony, Emmanuel was only 18 years old. Please listen carefully and don't fail to take actions that will impact your eternal destination. Let's begin. The Mystery of Heaven and Hell, First Testimony My name is Emmanuel Senion, I'm 18 years old and from Nigeria. 1. Meeting Jesus In November 2012, I became seriously ill, and my parents took me to a hospital. The doctor said that my blood was very low and that I had TB, tuberculosis. Learning this was very hard for my parents as they couldn't afford the cost to have me treated, so they took me back to my home. While I was on my bed resting, I started to feel strange and my whole body became weak. I found myself outside my body in a pure white room. Jesus appeared to me, his face was shining and handsome, but I noticed he was not happy. He took my hand and took me out of the room to a stand before a great throne. I saw God on the throne, but I could not see his face. His body was like a burning fire, full of power and glory. I saw groups of angels in white garments before the throne, and they were full of glory. Those angels carried books in their hands. I saw uncountable people before the throne, Revelation 20 verse 11, and they went one after the other to receive their judgment, and when each one would get before the throne, the angels would open the books in their hands and God would judge that person. Many people stood to hear God tell them, Depart from me. God would judge them with great anger and his voice sound like the greatest of thunders, Ezekiel 43 verse 8. Whenever God would say, Depart from me, a great storm carried that person away, Matthew 25 verse 41. All the people before this throne were afraid to stand before God. The angels never called out anyone's name, each person knew when it came his or her turn to receive their judgment, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10. Anyone that worketh iniquity was carried away by the storm into everlasting punishment, Matthew 25 verse 46. As long as you are alive, you still have a golden grace to repent from your sin and forsake your evil deeds. The anger of God is like a burning fire, Zephaniah 2 verses 1 to 3, and this world is a valley of decision, Joel 3 verse 14. Let your decision be Christ, surrender your life to Jesus Christ and escape the wrath of God. No matter what sins you have committed, Jesus will still forgive all of them. Hosea 14 verse 4, Habakkuk 2 verse 13. 2. Jesus takes me to hell fire. Then Jesus took me away from that place and to hell fire. On our way to hell, we passed through a tunnel. When we got out of this tunnel, we immediately arrived at a place of pure darkness. It was a place of great darkness with terrifying sounds of crying and horror. I asked, Where are we, Lord? And he said, This is the kingdom of Satan, Hellfire. Hellfire is a fearsome place of a thick darkness. I saw many demons, they were huge and ugly. These demons were working hard and with speed and without rest. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 The Lord told me, they are planning, how to bring, man to this place. Hellfire is like a sea, and everybody has his or her own portion within different departments. There are many people in hellfire asking for a second chance, but restitution is not possible, Micah 3 verse 4. The first department that the Lord showed me was a place where pastors lost heaven. I saw many pastors in hell. On their pits there's something like a signboard, it contains the name of that pastor, the name of the church that pastor attended, plus the reason why that pastor is in hell. Each pastor had a demon tormenting them. They cried out for mercy, but Jesus wept and said, When I warned you, you refused to listen to me, and now you are in this place, I know you not. Proverb 1 24 31 The Lord said to me, Hell has enlarged herself and none that come here shall return again. Proverb 2:19, Isaiah 4 verse 14. I saw such a great and surprising thing. My people, how can we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Hebrews 2 verse 3. 3, Reverend Ashafa in hellfire. I saw a man in hellfire, the demons were tormenting him with their weapons and devices. The man was begging for mercy, and he cried bitterly. I asked the Lord, who is this man? 
The Lord told me, he is Reverend Ashifa, the founder of Celestia Church of Christ, the White Garment Church. The Lord told me the mystery of this man, he made a covenant with Satan to seduce the people with a doctrine of darkness, healing with candles, perfumes and soaps. He would tell them to use these and to go bathe in the river, thus deceiving them with the power of a devil. The Lord added, he introduced false doctrines just to be known as a powerful man of God, Ephesians 4 verse 14, the Lord said, I warned him, but he refused. He said to the man, I know you not. Jesus was weeping like a baby, this man denied the cross of Christ just because of fame. Now he is in hell begging for mercy with the Lord, denying him due to iniquity being found within him. 2 Timothy 2 verses 12 and 19 I want you to understand that no matter what don't be living in a way or teaching others things that you cannot defend for yourself before God. Titus 1 verse 16, Jeremiah 23 verse 24 Many people are in hell fire because of their doctrine. Philippians 2 verse 5 4. Judas Iscariot in hell fire I saw another man in hell fire, the demons made him lay upon metal-like table. They hurt him with many type of devices. I saw a very big iron which the demon operated to pass through the stomach of the man. It went through his belly. The man cried bitterly. Then suddenly, a demon appeared having a very big metal knife in his hand. He cut off the middle of the head of the man, ten demon gathering many maggots and scorpions, he stuffed them inside the man's head and cover it back. The man cries more like the wind of the sea. It pained me greatly to see this. The Lord told me, he is one of my disciples, Judas Iscariot. I then asked the demon the reason they torment him in such a way, and the demon told me if he did not reveal that man of light, Jesus, to the people to be killed, the work of salvation will not come into manifestation. They shouted loudly, why did you betray him, continuing to torment him? Matthew 10 verse 4, Matthew 20 verse 18. You must be careful of what you are doing, do not betray Christ. Woe unto that man, by whom the Lord is betrayed. Matthew 26 verse 24. Those who have learned from the Lord and have understanding about the word of God must allow the word of Christ to dwell in you. Colossians 3 verses 16 to 17. To him who draws back, the Lord says, My soul shall have no pleasure in him. Hebrew 10 38. If you are a servant of God, examine yourself. Take away the stumbling block from your life. Hellfire is horribly real. 5. King Ahab and Jezebel in Hellfire. The Lord then showed me a man who was sitting chained onto an iron seat. The seat was very hot and reddish, like a coal. Though he screamed in great agony, the demons continued tormenting him with spears and with a great fury. This man began to beg Jesus for a chance to get out of the fire. I wondered who the man could be, the Lord knew my thoughts and told me, he is King Ahab. Immediately I saw a woman, the demons were tormenting her. They beat her with spears as she cried and shouted. The Lord told me, she is Jezebel, the false prophetess who seduced the people to sin against God. Revelation 2 verse 20. You must be careful because there are many false prophets and prophetess who teach the people false doctrines, who only set up riches for themselves. They call themselves saviors and deceive people with the deceptions of the devil. If they refuse to repent, they shall have their part in hell fire. 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 8. 6. A six-year-old boy in hell. I saw a little boy in hell fire, the demons were tormenting the boy with spears. When the boy saw us, he cried for help to take him out of the fire, but the Lord said, I am not the God of the disobedient. This boy was very rude while he was on earth, he would always disturb his parents during the time of the pastor's messages. Whenever his parent corrected him, he would shout at them. He became sick and died, now he is in hell forever. The Lord says, no disobedient child will inherit the kingdom of God. Ephesians 6 verses 1 to 2. 7. Most Reverend Patrick R. Cooney, in Hellfire. The Lord then showed me another man in Hellfire, he was known as Reverend Patrick Cooney on earth. The demons were cutting his body with saws as if it were a tree. The man was crying, but the demons continued tormenting him, and that way of torment was very great. They would mock him and laugh at him as the only spot where he was found at fault was due to his doctrine. 
He was here because he frequently would bow before a St. Mary image. Exodus 20 verses 3-4 This is so sad, many people end up in eternal hellfire due to this kind of act. Jesus wept with great compassion for the soul of man. I was also in a great sorrow when the Lord said to me, If you are truly sorrowful, you will tell them what you saw. You must open your heart and say no to the deception of the devil. We must come out from any doctrine that will make Christ have to deny us, 2 Corinthians 6 verses 14-18. Stop it, do not bow before, Saint Mary anymore. 8. The Department of Those Who Fashion Themselves Together with the Prostitute I saw many people in this department, the Lord show me their earthly pictures. They were all beautiful and handsome on earth, but now they are very ugly here in hell. The demons torment them and use spears to beat and pin their private parts, they cry and seek for death, but death cannot be found, Revelation 9 verse 6. O oh, Jesus wept, the people begged the Lord to take them out, they swear with their life to do his will if they could come out of the fire, but the Lord never plays or jokes with the word that has gone out of his mouth, Colossians 3 verses 5 to 6. It is declared in his word that anyone who practices immorality cannot inherit the kingdom of God, 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 to 10. Those who fashion themselves in manners of dressing. 9. The department of those who heard about Christ but refused to repent. There are many people in hellfire who have heard about the work of salvation, but refused to repent from their sin, these thought they can come into heaven with works of flesh and blood, but instead end up in the fire of hell that burneth for eternity, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 50. They were crying, but the Lord said, they were given much grace while they were on earth to repent from their sin but said, tomorrow and procrastinated. Some even said there is no hell fire. Some beat my servants that I sent to them, and now they are in hell begging for a second chance, I know you not. Proverb 1, 24-28 The Lord said, I show them the way to escape hell fire, but they hate me and my way and choose a life of enjoying this world. I even offer them grace when they were about to die, but they were distracted. The Lord also said, they hated me and loved death, not only earthly death, but also everlasting punishment in hellfire. Proverb 8, 35-36 Repent from your sin for there is no repentance in hellfire. Those who refuse to repent will be cast away into everlasting punishment, Revelation 21 verse 8. 10. The Department of the Backslidden Christians There was a great torment for those who turned away from the Lord, the demon cut their tongue cut their body, and beat them with sharp weapons. They cried bitterly, they started blaming themselves saying, Oh, why did I turn back? He warned me but I hearkened not. And the demon tell them to shut up, he gave you grace, but you made it useless. You will never get out, we shall torment you till the judgment is set. And they continue tormenting them. Ezekiel 18 verse 24. The demon would tell them, You are mine forever. Please do not go back to the world, all you who are Christians, for there is a great danger in turning away from the Lord. 2 Peter 2 verses 20-22 11. My own pit in hellfire. Then the Lord showed me my own pit in hellfire. I was very sorrowful, but the Lord said, Everyone on earth has their own pit in hellfire, and the mission of the demon is to bring you into it. You must make sure you do not go to that pit because it is very hot, burning with fire like acid. And we left the place. 12. The Throne of the Devil Then the Lord took me to the throne of the devil. I saw a very big tall, fat, huge demon on this throne. He was very hideous and he immediately set his eyes on me. He called my name, Seneon, you have come here to see our mystery. I will not allow you to share any of our secrets. I will kill you, I swear. And the Lord told me, Fear not, for I am your life. Isaiah 41 verses 10-11 Then after some time, we were invisible to the devil, and the Lord told me that all things are not visible to the devil, he does not know everything. But all things are visible to God. I at first did not believe this, because we all know that the devil is powerful. The Lord knew my thoughts and he took me to the back of the throne. I noticed the devil did not know that we were there. Then the Lord told me, Call my name and I quietly said, Jesus. And a great power shook hell and the devil fell down from his throne. Then the devil turned back and we appeared visible. 
Then the devil shouted my name, Senion, and the Lord told me, Try the power in my name. And I command devil to die for three minutes in the name of Jesus. The power in the name of Jesus nailed his spirit on something like a wall, and his hideous body fell down, Philippians 2 verses 9 to 11. And after three minutes, the Lord released his spirit and the devil came back into that hideous body. Immediately when he raised up, he shouted with a great fury and with wrath. Then I saw many demons approaching, they were rushing out and they all assembled with arrows in their hands. They all come against us at once, then heaven opened and I saw a pure white arrow. Just that one arrow came down and it destroyed all the arrows of the devils. I want to tell you, there is power in the name of Jesus, by his name every knee shall bow. Philippians 2 verses 9 to 11. Mark 16 verses 17 to 19, John 14 verse 14, John 16 verse 23. There is power in the name of Jesus, call it out with faith and the demons will flee from you, but when you call the name of Jesus without repentance you are in danger. 13. The Fallen Angels in Bondage The Lord took me to a big hall in hell, I saw all the demons chained down and on seats. The Lord told me they were the fallen angels, so I asked the reason why they were chained down. The Lord told me, they are very powerful and if they were released, they would cast more souls into hell, they are very powerful. Then the Lord told me, they will be released after the rapture to trouble the earth and persecute the people for the mark of the beast. 2 Peter 2 verse 4, one of them, called my name, and said, Senaon, the Lord has shown you a good testimony, but if I meet you on earth, I will kill you. When we left the place and on our way, I noticed that something was holding onto my cloth. When I looked back, I saw it was a demon, and he came out from underneath. Because of the light of Christ, it could not come near me. Then the Lord told me, He is the high priest of the devil, Beelzebub, Matthew 12 verse 24. The demon said to me, We will not allow you to share the testimony, and you will not reveal our secret, we will kill you. Then the Lord told me, Command him. So I commanded him in the name of Jesus to fall down, just then a great wind beat him down and he returned to his place. The Lord also showed me the spirit of stubbornness, and how it sent evil weapons, but the Lord sent it back many fold more, and it ran away. Psalm 91 verse 1. As long as the Lord held my hand, his presence cast away my fear, and there was not a sorrow about what I saw. 14. My Aunt. I saw a lady afar off in hellfire, the demons were tormenting her, Nahum 2 verse 10. She cried as she was looking at me, and I asked the Lord, who is she? The Lord told me, it is Ruth, your auntie, our firstborn. She had died many years ago, what a great sorrow, she was there, because she did not know the Lord. I was not happy, and I was thinking if I too would not make it to heaven. The Lord knew my thoughts and told me, I am your life. I want him to promise me that I will not end up in hell, and he said, if you know my name. He always tells me fear not, for I am your life. 15. The Church. The Church needs to wake up and put on the armor of God. I saw a group of demons, they gathered, then I saw a very big book before them. They began to open it, and immediately they opened to a page and said, Yes, we are to face the church, then they closed the book. Suddenly, an uncountable number of demons appeared with arrows in their hands to launch strikes against the church. I was surprised, then the Lord told me, These are the arrows of slumber and weakness, they are used so that my people may not pray, fast, and do exploits for my kingdom. All the demons have one mission, their mission is to bring people to hell. The church needs to wake up, we should pray against unseen forces that plan against the church, Ephesians 5 verse 14. I saw a powerful demon, he disguised himself into what looked like a beautiful lady that looks decent and like a good Christian. He entered a certain church to attack a brother that recently surrendered his life to Jesus Christ. He came in just to seduce that brother to lose his salvation. Joel 1 verse 14, Let us call a solemn assembly and cry unto the Lord to awaken the church, because they which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 18. The church needs a divine revival, let us build up our prayer life that we should destroy every seed that the Lord did not plant into the church. 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4 to 5. There are many demons in the church today operating in the likeness of men. They want to seduce the church, 2 Corinthians 10 verses 13 to 15. 
For us to overcome them, we must put on the armor of God, Ephesians 6 verses 10 to 18. Remember these are perilous times, 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 to 7. 16. The Christian that defends the devil. The Lord taught me a lesson, saying, many Christians are defenders of the devil. I think within myself, how can a Christian that prays against the devil defend the devil? The Lord told me, there are some things in the scripture that I condemn. The devil knows everything I condemn and he is operating on that. Some Christians will tell their brother and sister it is not a sin when it is a sin. The devil will make sure he finds a way to prove sin is not sin. As long as the Christian also says it is not a sin when it is sin, they make themselves defenders of the devil, 1 Peter 3 verse 3. Jesus says, I warn you about worldly dressing, but some we say, that is not what God means, it is our faith, some even say putting on earrings is not a sin. My son, I did not only mention earrings, but putting or wearing of gold or silver. Those who do dress to please the flesh. Jams 5, 3, don't be concerned about the outward beauty that depends on jewelry, or beautiful clothes, or hair arrangements. We have two kinds of beauty, our outward appearance and our inward appearance. And let it not be that outward adorning of painting the hair, and of wearing of gold, or of putting on apparel, 1 Peter 3 verse 3. The Lord says, if any Christian says it is not a sin they are the defenders of the devil and he that defends the devil will never get to my kingdom. The Lord also says, my son, read what I declare in the book of Deuteronomy 22 verse 5, I warn the people to obey me, because whenever a woman puts on a man's clothes or a man puts on a woman's clothes, they are cursing the God of heaven and earth, saying that he is not perfect in his work. The Lord was crying and said, My son, man curses his creator, and yet I am still giving them grace to repent. But if any of my servants refuse to repent, and if they continue defending the devil, I will spew them out of my mouth, Revelation 3 verses 15 to 16. 17. The Target of the Devil The Lord told me that the target of the devil is the prayer life of a man, once your prayer life is captured, then your decision for God will be captured. The person will also fall victim when the fasting life of the man is captured. You must master and guide your prayer life. When a person's prayers are affecting the kingdom of darkness, the devil will try to find ways to quench the power so its fire might weaken and die. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 The Lord told me, look at the man that the demons torment with anger. The Lord told me, when he was on earth there was always confusion in the kingdom of darkness when this man prayed, and I loved it. His prayers would thwart and destroy the devil's plans. The devil and his agents began to target the prayer life of this man. They captured the man through the bitterness in heart over one brother in the church. The Lord said, I warned him, but he refused to listen to me. The man had an accident and he died, Matthew 5 verse 44, and now he is in hell fire. There are many choir ministers that have bitterness in their heart against brothers in Christ. This is often because one is more talented than the other in one thing or another. People develop envy and pride because of this. They which do such things are in danger of hell, Matthew 18 verse 4. 18. The Plan of God The Lord told me, the plan of God is great for man. Whenever God has a plan for a man's life, the plan of the devil is to destroy the promise and plan of God. I asked Jesus, can the devil destroy the promise and the plan of God for a man? The Lord said, yes, and the Lord explained to me, in every plan and promise of God for a man, there is always a condition, and in that condition, there is grace and mercy, the grace is for a chance for restitution if the person breaks any of the conditions, mercy is for the person to be forgiven by God. The devil will make sure you break the conditions. When God made a covenant with Abraham, the condition God gave him was to walk before me and be thou perfect. Genesis 17 verses 1 to 7. God has a plan for your life and the conditions are written in the scriptures, Galatians 5 verses 19 to 21. Not only will that, but God himself tell you more. Do not lose the grace and the condition of God and his mercy will raise you up. Psalm 91 verses 11 to 12. 19. The wife of Pastor William Fuller Rancho Kamui in The Kingdom of God. Then we left hell fire, and the Lord took me to heaven. I saw a lady in heaven, very beautiful, she came out from a very big house she was the only one who owned this house. 
She came to me with a smiling face, her thought was, that I was arriving in heaven. I wondered who she could be as the glory of God had changed her earthly beauty. The Lord told me, she is the wife of Pastor William Fularancho Kamui, my servant. I was so happy because she was full of the glory of God. Heaven is so beautiful, the entire place was full of the glory of God. The Lord showed me the river of blood, it was very cool and it looked like a swimming pool. Whenever we sin against God and ask Jesus to wash us, then he will wash us in the river of the blood. Then the Lord showed me the trumpet that will be used for the rapture. He told me, my coming is very near. The trumpet was so shining and it was made with wonderful gold. He also showed me preparations for the rapture. The Lord took me to a very big hall and I saw many saints in pure white garments, they were singing, praising God, shouting unto the Lord the glory of God was in their midst. Heaven is very beautiful, it was shining everywhere because all the light, there was the glory of God. 20. A very big house of a woman in heaven. The Lord showed me a very beautiful and big house in heaven, I wondered who could be owner of this house. The Lord told me, it belongs to a woman, her name is Margaret. She is winning many souls to my kingdom. The soul she wins can never be numbered by man, only by God himself. Her works have built her this house. Matthew 10 verse 7, she surrendered her life to me, the things of the world were nothing to her, now she ends up in my glorious kingdom. Any Christian that refuses to win souls to my kingdom can never enter my glory. Matthew 28 verses 19 to 20, Matthew 10 verse 32. 21. The Road of Hell Fire. The Lord show me the road of hell, there are many people on that road. Some look like Christians, but they were going on the road leading to hell. Some held hands, a husband holds the hand of the wife, a wife hold the hand of husband. Parents hold the hands of their children, and some were going on their own. There was a very big load on the back of each person. The more Jesus looked at them, the more he was crying like a baby. I saw something that puzzled me, I saw groups of people, they were women, and they tried their best to pass through the way to heaven, but a power was pushing them back. Then the Lord told me, the unclean thing shall not pass through my way. Isaiah 35 verses 8 to 9. I asked, what is the unclean thing in them? And the Lord told me, it was their dressing, they put on earrings, weaven, attachments, chains, jewels. They put on man's clothes, they attempt to beautify themselves, they want to pass through my way. That cannot be possible. To obey is better than sacrifice. Then he continues crying. Isaiah 3 verses 16 to 24. 1 Peter 3 verse 3, Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. The Lord wept bitterly, and he cried aloud, like a woman in labor. Those of you who think you can just do as you like after you gave your life to Jesus, you are just deceiving yourself. Do not listen to the deception of the devil, when you are born again, all things have passed away, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. 22. The Road of Heaven. The Lord then shows me the road to heaven. I saw people, but there are not as many as on the hell road. On that road, I saw that some were moving forward, some were moving with joy, and some were dancing, praising God. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 9, 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. I then noticed that there are little and not too high hills on that road, and whenever anybody gets there, they will climb up it then get down to continue on their journey. I noticed some people had already crossed the hill, but were coming back to the road, they were tired of moving forward. If you are that kind of Christian, you are tired of temptation, afflictions, poverty and many other things. You think the best solution is to quit serving the Lord, so you stop that and go back because you feel you are just a man that escaped from a tiger and had fallen into the pit of a lion. The Lord still wants you, but you must persevere. We must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Acts 14 verse 22. Return to Christ and He will save you. Remember the torment of the backsliders in hellfire, Jeremiah 3 verses 21 to 22. I saw some were standing, they are not moving, they are just standing there. If you are Christian and you are thinking of whether to continue serving the Lord or not, you have to stop the evil thoughts, and then move forward. The best choice is to continue moving, so pray for strength, Ephesians 6 verse 18. I then saw that some were crawling, they wished to continue on the way, but they were tired. 
If you are the kind of Christian that you fear your parents more than you fear the things of Christ, you have to stop it. This is very dangerous and some of you think that your parents are persecuting you, making you to sin against God. You have to pray and say no to any decision that is against the will of God. The Lord says, Fear not, Matthew 10 verse 28. Pray for strength to stand up and begin to move forward because our God is powerful. Cry unto Him, and He will listen to your request, Ephesians 6 verses 14 to 18, Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Jesus wept bitterly, and I too was sorrowful. The Lord told me, What happened to you that you are sorrowful? If you truly are sorrowful, then tell the people what you saw. I then woke up with fear. The End Repentance It is time to repent from any sin. No matter what sin you might have committed, God is just and faithful to forgive you your sin, Romans 10 verses 9 to 10. Jesus loves your soul and he does not want your soul to go to hellfire. Habakkuk 2 verse 13 God has sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for your sin. Whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life, John 3 verse 16. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father except by Jesus, John 14 verse 6. Repent now and be saved, Acts 17 verses 30 to 31. If you are ready to give your life to Christ, pray the following prayer. Lord Jesus, I know myself as a sinner, I know I am in darkness, but now I'm ready to do what you want me to do. Please forgive me of all my sin, wash me in the river of your blood, heal me, strengthen me, empower me, give me power over the flesh and let your kingdom come into my heart. Write my name into the book of life and let there be joyfulness in heaven over the salvation of my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.